everyone, we are officially back from spring break. Let's get started. Hello, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Marily Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. Today is Monday, March 27th, 2023, and it is the first day back after a week long break last week. And I knew it was gonna be one of those days that it was gonna be challenging for both myself and the students. So I made sure that I started a slow start kind of morning, also with my afternoon class as well. And this is what they found on top of their desk this morning and at the beginning of my second class. So this is a spring quick write that I created right before I left and I left it on top of the student's desk. So basically they draw a picture and they write about that picture according to the directions. So they either write about something related to the spring season or something related to what they did during spring break. So I give them choice. And if they run out of space, they can go on to the back and continue writing. This was a great way to get our day started and our class started. And tomorrow the students will slowly start to share what they wrote about. So I'll have a few students share at the beginning of each class for the rest of the week. And then my homeroom, which I had this morning as my block one, they worked on finishing their reading assessment that they started before we went on spring break. So just giving them a little refresher on that and make sure that they were working on it. I think I still have maybe four students that need to finish, but they'll do that tomorrow. And the students that were done were working on their iReady minutes. And that's basically what we ended up doing for block one. For block two this afternoon, they did the same writing activity as well. But then with that class, because they're a little bit behind, we went ahead and did a rereading of the paired selection for our unit one weeks one and two. I'm sorry, for our unit five weeks one and two. So this is the passage right here. We're basically working with the essential question, what can you learn when you look at things up close? So this is a little different from our anchor text and our shared read because this is a fantasy story. The other ones were expository texts. As you can see, this is the one that we had as our anchor text. This is a drop of water. And just by the text features, we can see that this is expository text talked about how a water drop changes from a liquid to a solid and a gas and different stages that it goes through, condensation, evaporation, how clouds form, snowflakes, different kinds of variety with snowflakes, how frost and dew affect that or how water is included in that, how water and light bends and of course the water cycle. So with this particular text, we were looking at figurative language. Now, I did see from my students' quizzical looks that they forgot what figurative language was, which is okay. I am not hurt by that. I just know that, hey, teachable moment. So I put up a vocabulary video on figurative language and then started writing on the board the different types of figurative language that we have learned this school year. So this is the list of the figurative language that we have learned so far this school year. And I'll explain these post-its right now. So this particular story had different examples of figurative language. We were looking at not just identifying the type of figurative language, but looking at why the author used it and how it enhances the story. So as we did the rereading, I gave students those post-it notes and I asked them to be on the lookout, be reading detectives and find different examples of figurative language. We did find a couple of similes, one example of an illusion, and a couple of idioms. So that's what you saw on the board. The students wrote it on their sticky notes. They wrote an example of it, what it was, and their name, and they put it right next to that type of figurative language on the board. So that was a really great way to engage them in the rereading and also refresh their mind because the test will assess them on author's use of figurative language to convey information or whatever is happening in the story. So that's what we did for my block two, and then I passed out the homework. So this is the homework that my students have for the week. I do have two different kinds of differentiated passages because I have two different groups. So basically students are looking at the essential question for the new unit that we're gonna start, which is in what ways do people show they care about each other? So they're gonna read this story called The Contest. They're gonna answer the questions and I also need them to map out the story elements. And that will be their homework for the week and it'll be due at the end of the week. 
I don't go overboard with homework and I do give students plenty of time, but I do use strategically my homework assignments so that we review the skills that we are currently learning in our reading unit. That, my friends, is all that happened today, Monday. I am doing my last minute preparations for a writing PD that I am doing here for teachers at my school. It starts tomorrow after school and Wednesday after school. So I will let you know more about that. I'm having a lot of fun coming up with the activities that I want teachers to participate in. So I will share more about that as the week continues. So I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, I'm coming to you from the end of the day on Tuesday. It is actually close to 6.30 right now. I just finished my training with the teachers that I was giving the writing PD to and also had a great day with my students. So I wanna go over the highlights for today and let you know how my day went. So this morning I started with my block two as my AM group. And what I did with them was go over the writing test that they took today. So I make sure that my students that take the regular tests, I had them move to one side of the room and my ELL students, I had them move to the front because I do the scaffolded test with them. Let me go ahead and show you what that scaffolded test looks like and how it compares to the actual test that my other students take. This time they ended up taking the printed test because our laptop car isn't with us right now for maintenance. They're doing maintenance on them. So I ended up just giving them the paper-based test. And then when we get the laptops back, they can just input their answers into the computer. So let me show you that right now. So this is the scaffold test that the students take. And as you can see, they provide them with a lot of different text features that allow them to understand what they're reading in English. And this is how the actual test looks for the rest of the students. And this question was really um, difficult for the students to understand because it really had them to think critically and synthesize the information. So I kind of gave them a scaffold. I did give them a scaffold. So it focused on paragraph two so we went back to paragraph two and I had the students help me find the different figurative language examples that were being used. And then I gave them a closed answer or a text structure for their answer. So we highlighted this part of the question because that's what we restate and then we answer. And then of course they needed to provide two examples of figurative language. So that's where they would do that based on what we had found. So yeah, that question I did provide some scaffolds for the students with that. And then they had more antonym questions, another one that dealt with figurative language and its purpose, and another antonym question. So a total of 10 questions for the rest of the students, whereas the ESOL students only work on the first passage. So that's basically how my morning was spent. In the afternoon, my students were introduced to our new unit, and we went over the weekly opener video, the study blast, the essential question is, how do people show that they care for each other? I'm paraphrasing that, but that's basically the gist of it. And we read the read aloud as well as the shared read and answer the fine text evidence questions. So I did get through all of my reading plans. I didn't get through all of my writing plans. Yesterday we did do writing. It was the April quick write that I showed you. Today we spent our writing time having students start to share that writing with the rest of the class and they love to do that. So that's how we spend our writing. So actually, yeah, I did get to writing. What am I saying? Maybe not exactly what I had planned, but we did get through writing. And then we had our PD for this afternoon writing across or writing beyond language arts. And I have my presentation on Canva, which I wanna go home because it is officially 6.32 right now. I'll show you more about it tomorrow. And yeah, tomorrow is our second day with this PD. I got some really great feedback from my participants. It's a very small group, only had six teachers. We can call ourselves a little PLC, um, you know, professional learning community. So that is my Tuesday and tomorrow is another day. So I'll see you then. Hello again. I'm coming to you at the end of the day on Wednesday. Just finished wrapping up my writing PD on Beyond Language Arts, tips for teachers on how to incorporate writing across the subject areas. And my students today had a great time this morning rereading Sadie's game. And we also completed the conflict for that story. We're gonna finish it tomorrow because we did the rereading. We also went over vocabulary and I gave them time at the beginning of class to finish sharing their spring break quick writes. 
So then my afternoon group were finishing up their assessments and then I got them introduced to the new unit. So that's pretty much everything that we did today and I will see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is the end of the day on Thursday, just wrapped up with my Minecraft club. Yes, I have been staying here pretty late the past three days and I'm gonna gather my things and go home because I have a 5.30 Zoom PD on my own that I have to do it from home because I'm not gonna stay here till 8.30 p.m. obviously. So I'm gonna give you an update on how our day went and then head on home for that PD. So today I started with my block two this morning and we went ahead and read the read aloud story for our new unit. We discussed the realistic fiction characteristics as well as did some think alouds for figurative language and sequence and things that were happening in the story. And then we had to fill out our building vocabulary graphic organizer to kind of just share the different ways that people show how they care about each other since that's our essential question. And then we went ahead and started reading our shared read and answered the questions that were in it too. We had a great discussion with that. Then with my block one, which I had in the afternoon, we went ahead and finished our conflict graphic organizer showing the second event that led to the resolution, wrote down the resolution, and then the students answered a reading respond question or a respond to reading question. Then we went ahead and read our anchor text, Mama, I'll give you the world. Beautiful story, we had great discussions and the students completed some graphic organizers on different aspects of the story. So those graphic organizers were this one on figurative language, this one on character dialogue and what they say to each other and what they think about each other, and this one on the illustration and how it connects to the text. Now, I also wanted to go ahead and show you that respond to reading question that we worked on. And after that, I wanna show you a kind of glimpse of the presentation that I created for my PD with the teacher since I have a little tiny bit of time right now, but I'm gonna zoom by it because I gotta go. So here's the reading response that we completed together on Sadie's relationship with her brother, Richie, and what we can learn from it. And we had some sentence starters over here and I highlighted how they were being used and of course reviewing our rap strategy and building that question together. So this was a good model because the students will do the same thing tomorrow but with the other story that we read which is Mama I'll Give You the World. So now I'm just going to zoom through the presentation on writing beyond language arts tips for teachers. So this was our agenda, the introduction, our norms, I did do a menti.com activity at the start, which was a word cloud, just to get their input on what they think about when considering incorporating writing into instruction. We had some quotes and we started going over the research that backs up why writing across the curriculum is important. So these were the highlights of the research, but then I went a little bit more in depth into each particular research part. And then we did another reflection using another word cloud with Menti. And we went into our strategies for incorporating writing. So with that, we watched this video from Edutopia on low stakes writing, which is great. And five activities to get kids writing and a quick write on those two videos and what they learned. And of course, they shared. Then we did this article review from our ASCD resource, PD and Focus, Seven Literacy Strategies at Work. So they read that and they, they did a three to one response on what they learned from the article, things that they found interesting and a question they had. And then we started reviewing just quickly different tips or strategies for incorporating writing into different subjects. So this is for math, science, social studies, reading, art, music, and PE. Then it was time for a break. And then after that, we did how we can use writing to teach content. So I gave him a quote from Gretchen Burnaby, which I talked about her in my Writing Institute vlogs. And this is one of her strategies. I used to think, but then, and now I think. So I had them reflect on that using the article that we read. And then we did the QA12345 strategy, which was a really great one. I'll probably talk to you more about this strategy in a future vlog, but basically you pose a question, the students answer it, and then you wanna model this out loud at first so let's say you ask the question what is your name they say the answer so then you will ask them how do you know when after they answer the how what does that mean how else do you know how what does that mean so your answer is what so basically if you notice as you're asking these questions the students will then give you the evidence and also elaborate on that 
So we practice that using the question, why is it important to incorporate writing across the curriculum? And this strategy, again, is from Gretchen Burnaby. So I will link down the resource that she shares on her website for free with the script. And on the next page, after she shares the script, she shares simple questions that you can use to practice with the students this type of strategy, as well as another link to a sheet that looks like a comic book kind of conversation back and forth that another person created based on the strategy. And then we did notice and wonder, and we practiced it with this picture. We compared it to visual thinking strategies, which are similar, except we have an extra question here. And then we went into content-based songs so the teachers can create their own song. This is the one that I created to We Don't Talk About Bruno last year for writing. And then it was their turn to try and write a song, just a short version of a song, so they can practice this. And then we wrapped it up with a rose, a thorn, and a bud. So then we went on for day two and we reviewed day one. Then we went over how we can assess writing across subjects. So these are the different ways. And then I went into each way a little bit more, giving some examples. And sometimes we watched a video related to that strategy. And here with pre-review, we have another Edutopia video and another Edutopia video on the tag feedback and writing conferencing. Then it was time for them to create their product uh, incorporating everything that they have learned and this was the directions that they had and i'll go ahead and insert some clips right here of the different posters that the teachers created they had a subject the grade the topic the writing strategy that they were using directions and how they would use it tips or examples and then of course how they would assess the students based on that writing strategy it was break time they shared and then we wrapped it up with another word cloud. So that was my writing PD that took two days and I got really, really great feedback from the participants and I'm so happy that they enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to doing another one in April on an ebook on teacher wellness because I think by then we will need some teacher wellness, you know, the year is starting to end and there's a lot of things that come down that we need to make sure that we complete before the year wraps up. So that's all I have for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is the end of the day on Friday and boy has it been a day. It was quite challenging managing some of the behaviors today, but it is that time of year, right? So just trying to reflect and think on different ways that I can motivate the students to make better choices. So anyway, this morning I started with my homeroom, which is my block one. And as soon as they came in, they needed to answer their reading response question for our anchor text, Mama, I'll Give You the World. So then the students after that started working on their story elements flip book. Then after that in the afternoon, I had my block two and they just needed to make sure that they finished the fine text evidence questions for Sadie's game. And then we went over vocabulary, showing them the pictures of the vocabulary words, the photos, going question by question so that they are more familiar with the vocabulary words. And then we read the anchor text. So that is pretty much what we ended up doing in lessons. I wanted to give you a closer look at that reading response question from Mama, I'll Give You the World, which my block two will do sometime next week. And then I just want to give you a glimpse of my lesson plans for next week. Honestly, I finished my lesson plans and I planned for five days. And after I printed out the lesson plans and I started working on my Google Keep so that I can just you know, set what I'm doing each day, I realized that next week is a shorter week because on Friday is a teacher planning day since the grading period ends next week. Thursday and Friday, we have to upload grades. Yeah, I can't believe that. We're already wrapping up the third grading period and getting ready for the fourth grading period, which is the last one. So let me show you some of those examples that I was talking about. Starting with the question that students had on their desk, what can readers learn from Luisa's relationship with Mama? Similar to the question they answered for Sadie's game. I did give them a similar quick tip and I did add this after the fact. So I'm about to show you a student sample answer and it doesn't have this one because I told them to add it later, but I did add it for this one that I just printed out for you. And on the back, they have more lines if they need it to continue. So this is one of the student responses and they did a really great job making sure they analyze the text and address the question and use the sentence starters to help them support their answer with text evidence. So they did a really great job. 
And this is the little story elements flipbook that I have created in the past. So students were going over who the main characters were, description, where and when the setting took place. Then they needed to give me an important event that happened in the beginning, the middle and the end. And then they went into the conflict and the resolution of the conflict. And then on the back, they needed to do some character analysis by showing one character so that they could draw a little portrait here, what the character thinks, does, says, and feels, and how the author describes them. So that was what they were working on. And my block two will work on this sometime next week. And here are my lesson plans. There I have fixed it and I condensed it to four days instead of five days. So those are my lesson plans. And this is how they look on Google Keep with a digital picture of my lesson plans and a checklist of what I am doing each day. And again, yep, Friday is a teacher planning day. So there it is. I also went ahead and updated our class calendar so that it is ready for April. And that is basically all that I have to share with you for this week. It's been an interesting week coming back from break. I feel like it's been two weeks since we've been back from break, but no, it's just been this one week. <laughs> but next week is another week, so I hope you will come along with me and see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day, and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.